Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 297 of Curly Podcast. Our today's guest with me is Emily Harris. She's a freelance concept artist and illustrator from Devon, United Kingdom. And of course, if you go to the captions, you can find the ID to our Instagram account, the links to her website and Linktree, and also a link to our session as well. And in the link to the website, which is like lobot.card.co, you can go and see there's like a lot of like, you know, explanations about the commissions if you want to commission uh, her, you know, for a piece or a gift or something, you know, just to support our guest today. And there's also like the co link and link tree. So do check them all out if you want to like, you know, just be generous and give a cup of coffee to the guest today. And hopefully I'll probably make a coffee in a couple of months later, but not now. That's on our top. But um, with, with everything being said, how are we doing today? Pretty good. As you can see, the sun has started to appear in the UK where it's been very rainy. Um, so awesome. yeah, pretty good. It's been a, been a nice day. Um, yeah. All right, let's jump into the first question I actually like, had I wanted to ask you. Why Mloha? What does it mean? Because that's ID to your Instagram and also like in your web, like website URL as well. E-M-L-O-H-A. What does that mean? I wish I had a interesting answer for this but it's uh it's literally just the first two letters of my name so my full name is emily louise harris so e-m-l-o-h-a and i was like it kind of sounds like aloha like hello and i was like that it sounds just kind of nice and having kind of a uh quite a popular name i feel like like a signature yeah, like everyone, I feel like in the 90s has like the middle name Louise and like everyone was called Emily. So I don't feel like I have a very uh, like different name. Uh, but Mloha was obviously coming up and was available for me to use. Uh, so yeah, I wish I had a more like interesting thing, but I just, yeah, it just kind of worked because um, my name was just taken. It's too popular. So yeah. Well, I mean, that's an interesting story, actually, uh, because I was like, yeah, Mloha, that's really such a unique name. I wonder what does it mean? Maybe it's some like, like Latin word or something that like that, that has a specific meaning. But this is also, also an interesting, like, that's an interesting word, uh, like, a, like a happy accident. Yeah, um, exactly. It just sounds a bit like Aloha. So I like that it kind of yeah. sounds like hello, but it's my name in a way. So yeah, it, it, it works. All right. And all right, so of course, you know, the next major thing I want to ask you is I'm just, you know, start a topic with um, what led you, like, how was your journey of, like, you know, discovering art and just choosing to pursue it? Which, of course, you know, you're now working as a concept artist in the industry. So from the beginning till now, could you give us a like, quick rundown of, like, how has your journey been? Yeah, sure. So I guess, like, a lot of creatives. Uh, I've always I've always done kind of creative stuff like ever since I was quite young um I kind of I grew up in a household where like art was really encouraged like my parents were very much like hey if this is something you want to do like you know try everything out and kind of you know see what sticks uh my mum was actually a really kind of fond artist she used to work a lot in um pencil and kind of charcoal and stuff so like I always had like little folders of her artwork kind of sitting around the house. Um, I, uh, yeah, so I've kind of always been quite creative. Like I, I didn't, I didn't love school uh, growing up. Like I really struggled with like subjects like maths. And then obviously when I kind of started going to more like art classes when I was younger, um, I realized I was like, oh, actually like, I'm kind of good at this and I really enjoy this. And it was like quite a bit, you know, it was a bit of a difference from how much I was kind of struggling with like mainstream topics. Uh, so um, I've always been quite curious about it. Like I tried a bit of everything when I was in school. So I did everything from like textiles and fashion and painting and mixed media, like lino printing and things like that. Like I was quite a curious, uh, kid so i was kind of always trying like lots of different medias um and then so like obviously in the uk you go to kind of like primary school and then you go to secondary school 
and then a lot of the time when you finish that like you're kind of encouraged to go into sixth form where you do things like a levels um i didn't want to do that because obviously how i felt about school i was like you know i knew art was kind of something that i was quite interested in um and at the time i was kind of finishing up school i'd gotten really into photography uh my sister actually uh she bought a camera and i remember her like letting me just like take photos and i took it everywhere i was literally just like i love this thing um so instead of doing a levels when i came out of school i decided to go straight into college um which um obviously like a lot of people do but also like a levels was kind of encouraged but i was just like i knew i wanted to do something creative so um at that point i i didn't actually study to be a concept artist or an illustrator for that matter um i have a photography background and that's where i kind of started so i went off and i did um a two-year course in photography and kind of at the end of that i was like i think like a lot of creative people are like i wasn't really sure if this was exactly what i wanted to do so i did an art foundation which uh in the uk is basically like you get a year where you get to try different art disciplines um so you try everything from you know oil painting and watercolor and pencil drawings and photography you kind of do a bit of everything um and so i i did a bit of everything then and then i was still like okay maybe photography is the way to go uh so that's what i actually got a degree in so obviously after that i went to university uh i went to the university of westminster um where i studied photographic arts um the course wasn't as it wasn't as arty as i kind of had hoped because i think coming from kind of a background where i tried a bit of everything um i was sort of i think expecting there to be a bit more uh you know a bit more experimenting um and it wasn't really like that um and yeah so i kind of went off to university to do photography and although i was on a photography course i kind of ended up uh making a lot of friends that were doing film and tv so obviously i was kind of exposed to people that were going into doing like prop design and working on set as like dops and directors and things like that so i'd sort of started to see a little bit about um you know the way film and tv kind of works um and i think it was around that time like my third year i was I guess I was like creating a lot of stuff that like wasn't typical of my photography course. My course was very much geared towards like people that wanted to be like documentary photographers and um, fashion photographers, things like that. Um, and I was like making these like weird little illustrations that were, it's kind of like compositing now, I guess, and kind of a bit like photo batching, like in concept art now. Um, and my my lecturers were a bit like you you're on a photography course like why are you why are you doing this and i was like well i i like it and i find it interesting and you know i've always loved stories and things like that like um and i think for a while i like wanted to go into doing film set photography but it's super hard to get into um unless you kind of know people i guess in the industry but um yeah, I'm kind of like, it's kind of a long story, I guess. But uh, I then started sort of hearing about concept art. There was a guy that I knew at university and his brother was a concept art for video games. And um, I mean, you get a lot of people that are like, you know, I grew up playing games and doing all this. And I guess I wasn't really like that. I'm kind of a newer gamer, I guess. Uh, but I'd, you know, I'd, I'd started, um, playing games like Dishonored and Uncharted and The Last of Us and you know all of those like amazing games um and I kind of grew up playing Grand Theft Auto like when I was way too young to do that because my older brother uh was a bad influence in that sense but um yeah so obviously this whole like concept art word kept kind of flowing about and I was like oh this is kind of interesting and it feels a bit like what I was kind of doing in photography and um I guess I just started 
being a bit like oh my god people do this for a job like how do i how do i do this uh and um I'm trying to think what happened like after that. I, I I didn't get into concept art until a good few years later. Like I, I left university and I worked in retail for five years. So I was literally working as a shop assistant, uh, was trying to figure out what I wanted to do because obviously photography uh wasn't kind of my way forward. Like I still enjoyed taking photos, but um it it just wasn't a career that you know was kind of happening for me uh so i worked in retail i think for about five years which is quite a long time um and then uh i kind of i wanted to start taking things a bit seriously because i was like I, I didn't want to keep working in retail and obviously i you know i kind of had i had something creatively that i was like i need to do something with this um so it was kind of at that point that I was like, OK, I need to uh, maybe start going to events, things like that, trying to figure out, you know, how people got into the industry. So in London, there's an event called Vertex. Um, and I also went to a small event in Germany, um, which was like really small at the time. I think maybe it only went for like one year and then it it kind of ceased to exist after that um but uh yeah i ended up going to vertex and i was doing a lot of research about you know how people become concept artists how to you know illustrate um and a lot of that was just from kind of youtube and picking up art books and things like that um i mean you can't see but to my right is just like the heaviest bookshelf like covered in books um and um yeah so i ended up going to vertex uh and obviously watching like all of these amazing talks um and i ended up going to the industrial light and magic talk and i was like looking at all this like incredible artwork of like jurassic park and uh obviously like star wars as well and i'm actually not a huge star wars fan uh but i was like this you know the artwork they're creating is like you know incredible um and as someone who like i had no experience so you know i obviously was just working in retail uh in terms of drawing my skills were like not not amazing um but i yeah i ended up going to this event um i actually took my photography business cards and I ended up because I changed all of my social names to M Loha. Um, and so I like stuck like pieces of paper like over my links because I couldn't afford to um to buy new business cards for this event. Um so yeah, I was literally handing out like business cards that were just like so terrible. Like now I think about it, but um yeah, I ended up obviously so. I kind of briefly mentioned, but like, I'm I'm a bit of a nervous person, and I was quite shy like back in the day. So like, the idea of like networking and things like that was just like, no way. Like even the night, the like the morning of Vertex, I was like, I'm not going. I was like, there's no way you're getting me to go on my own and meeting all of these like incredible artists and like, yeah, I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Um, but I was basically the last person to go up and say hi to the ILM guys. So obviously they'd already had a lot of people going up at this point, like showing them portfolios. And um, there was a lot of graduates obviously that go to these events and, you know, are kind of ready to start going into the industry. Like I didn't even have a portfolio in all honesty. Um, Cause it was kind of at the start where I was just like, what am I gonna do? You know, what, how do I do this? Um, and I was the very last person to go up and I remember just like going up and I was super nervous and I was just like hi I was like I my name's Emily uh I've got an Instagram like can I show you some stuff and they were super nice about it like they were super super nice and I ended up talking to the art director a little bit um and then kind of after the event he followed me on Instagram and 
I mean, he just had so much time for me. Um, and I ended up kind of, you know, asking them a lot of questions about, you know, what do I need to learn? What do I need to do to be able to, you know, do this kind of professionally? And they were giving me a ton of advice um, uh, about, you know, ILM's quite a 3D uh, heavy art department. So pretty much, you know, pretty much everyone works in 3D there. So they were like, you know, can you start learning things like Maya? Um, so basically in my spare time, I was just, you know, I was learning Maya as much as I could on a tiny little MacBook Air that was struggling with just about everything that I was loading on it. Um, but I was pretty consistently posting on Instagram at that point. I was posting stories and he was kind of seeing it and being like, great work, keep going. And obviously for someone that had no experience coming from nothing and this massive art director that had worked on, you know, Harry Potter, like the, which, you know, I grew up on Harry Potter. So like, I was like, oh man, I was like, I can't waste this opportunity. I have to like, just keep pushing. So I was like working my retail job. I was doing like ridiculous shifts and then coming back and working till like two, 3 a.m. in the morning to like, you know, try and learn how to be a concept artist. And um, yeah, I, I mean, a kind of long story short, but I ended up posting a lot of stuff and uh, he was like, we've got this kind of entry level job coming up, which was an art assistant job. Um, what, what do you think about applying for it? Like, do you feel like you're ready? And I was like, yeah, yeah, completely. <laughs> And I totally wasn't. I've literally I got together my portfolio in probably about two weeks and it was it was stress. Um, but yeah, I pretty much went from, you know, kind of having this like moment working in retail where it was like it's time to do something to kind of working in ILM and kind of like a six month uh, kind of time window, which is a little bit ridiculous now I kind of look at it but it's kind of one of those things that I was like so determined to make happen so um so yeah that's kind of a brief but well, I say brief it's uh yeah that's kind of how I sort of got into the industry so I obviously ended up having my interview at ILM and um I started out there as an art assistant so I learned everything I know pretty much on on the job um I obviously the whole team was just like incredible mentors to me um but they could see that obviously I was quite passionate about it and obviously had a little bit of potential there so um yeah they basically taught me everything I know and I was at ILM for about four years um I progressed into a concept art role there and then uh, a year ago about a year ago I think it was I became a freelance artist so that's that's kind of a a longish story but that's basically the the start so yeah all right interesting and actually one thing you, i want to like you know touch upon again with uh networking actually i kind of like you know i think i don't know maybe i'm just you know, thinking about it too much but i don't think people realize like actually understand what, what networking is, right? And I think your case was a good one, right? Mm. But I, I just want like you know mention something, and of course, please let me know. You know, you share your thoughts about what I'm going to say as well. Yeah, sure. Net networking isn't like a video game where you're going to get points by how many people you can convince to notice. That's not networking. Networking isn't like you know just trying to be like have a fake smile and be happy and just show fake interest in people just to get an advantage or something like that's not that that's just being silly if i'm being honest networking is when you try to find the people and 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 please pay attention i'm not saying artists i'm saying people because there are like a lot of different roles and artists in the industry that you know could be helpful to you like when you try to focus on like you know meeting meeting people and introducing yourself to people and starting engaging conversation with people who actually have similar goals and you know kind of like you know vibe with you that you 
that you can, you know, just collaborate with and, you know, make something great together. Right? Mm. That's, I think, in essence, what networking is. And the reason I kind of have a like, a, like a weird feeling about the concept of networking, networking these days, I, mean, I think it kind of stems from the like kind of like a LinkedInish corporate culture that you know has been present in society in general. And yeah, like and, and here's the thing, and I and and I know for a lot of people these these are like no brainers, but especially like you mentioned, you're a very anxious person, and I and I assume you're also like a pretty pretty much introverted person, like if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, usually, I mean, like uh, I, I I've grown a lot of confidence, I think, over yeah. like over the years that kind of I've done this because, you know, you. you like talking about networking like you're meeting these people and it's super intimidating like you you know you're you're kind of like these people are busy like will they have time for me like you know and, and as someone that that has that little bit more anxiousness I tend to kind of overthink it but at the end of the day everyone started from somewhere right so like some of the kind of biggest questions I yeah or like a lot of the times like when people start conversations with me they're kind of like Oh my god sorry i know i know you're like super busy it's like i i know exactly where you were right so like a lot of you know a lot of artists a lot of people that do this professionally they have time a lot of the time for you you know they they want to share these stories and i think that's also an important part of networking right so it's like not just about meeting people for work and for jobs you know if you're a professional then obviously that is more important but if you're you know kind of new to it it's also just about hearing people's experiences and and sharing that that kind of knowledge you know because i'm sure like when i was starting out like i didn't know where to start you know like i, I really didn't like i was coming from a completely different different world um but yeah that i guess that's yeah i think it's important in a sense of just like hearing what people have to kind of say about you know being an artist and and creating art and you know I, I know for me personally like I'm always interested in hearing you know what people are working on and you know it yeah so sorry I interrupted you it sounded like you oh, no no worries. Wait, no worries but yeah yeah I mean I, I actually asked for your feedback like so that's fine you know yeah. uh but the thing but the thing is you know I just wanted like you know like emphasize on the topic you know just for people who because believe it or not like a lot of people are really confused about how to actually socialize with people which what i'm saying it sounds weird but it's true like a lot of people have problems with that because that's not it's like a skill like any other skill right oh yeah and, for sure and i just want to like you know mention that to make it simple like break it down and you know simplify it for those people right to just be yourself and try to find people who match your the style of work that you're doing the way that you work and just say hi oh, hey I, I like what you're doing hey, and just start a conversation about it. work they're doing or you genuinely like and there's no need to memorize lines or prepare anything just release your thoughts that's it yeah i agree i i think at the end of the day it's like you're always kind of like people are very intuitive right so you're kind of going to know if like if you have a vibe with someone you know meeting artists is just like meeting people in everyday life you know meeting new friends like you're you you can kind of gauge it you know if if you go up to someone and you know they're maybe not having the greatest day then you're not going to carry on trying to you know push a conversation and i guess it's very similar with these kinds of networking events you know even though it might be people that you're really really excited to, to meet but maybe it's a case you know you can say hey you look like you're super busy and I don't want to bother you like do you mind me messaging you you know at another time or sending you an email or whatever and sometimes people will just go oh my god thank you it's been a really busy day yes that's totally fine like I had literally this exact thing happen to me recently there was someone I really wanted to say hi to at this event and he was just swamped by people and it, it happens and I would I literally just went up to him I was like look just a really quick thing I I you know I really liked your talk I love what you do like 
you look really busy and I don't want to, you know, keep you. Um, and he was totally fine about it. So I think that kind of comes with time. And I think with like the more events that you do and the more people that you kind of meet in this, you know, if we're talking in terms of like, you know, the, the concept space, um, just kind of read, read the vibe. Um, uh, yeah, that would kind of be, I guess, my, my thought on that. Cause I've definitely been there where I've been a bit, I guess I'm a bit more reserved cause I, uh, I have that nature where I'm a bit like, Oh my god, I really don't want to bother this person, you know. But um, yeah, th like there is no harm in asking, you know. There's no harm in saying hi to someone. Like the worst thing they can do is say, "Sorry, I'm I'm busy," or you know, hopefully someone won't be rude. But yeah, the the experience that I've tend to have is just you know quite positive. So yeah. All right. So I think those are some good pointers for anyone. I'd be interested in that topic, but for now, let's you know move on to another topic that I'm actually interested to like ask. Basically, um, I think there's a pin post on your Instagram that you gave a brief introduction of yourself. You know, the one where there's a video you're like looking over like a canyon or something, and there's yeah. like a wall of pillar of text on the left side. And, and one particular thing that's really caught my eye was like, and I think you mentioned this in the introduction of this podcast as well you got into the industry six months after you started like you know practicing and drawing right yeah. so here's this is going to be interesting because the question i usually ask people is this tell us about your professional experience from the start of your journey till now so i think since your journey is like a little bit like unique so i think i'm really curious to what's uh how, like how has your journey been professional and also what are some of the most important lessons professionally you've learned as a concept artist that the juniors that are listening right now could really benefit from. So that's a juicy question. I'm sorry. So, no, really good, really yeah. good question. Um, so in terms of like my professional journey, obviously, as I mentioned, um, my first ever job was at ILM, which I know is is very fortunate. Um, but I will say I I put in the work. I I put in a lot of hours into you know it, trying to improve um and i think it's kind of a difficult question because obviously i've been quite lucky to have such a huge chunk of my experience at ilm so it was kind of you know i didn't really have to leave and kind of go anywhere else to gain experience i didn't do like an internship or anything like that so um i started there obviously as an art assistant um and for anyone that obviously doesn't know, like an art assistant is essentially uh, you are kind of assisting the the concept artists and the art department with all kinds of different things. So like I was doing everything from creating mood boards um, to creating presentations for events. I was doing more like admin based stuff like, you know, packaging artwork to send to clients, like things like that. So it was one of those roles where like I could kind of learn things on the job because I, I was in the department you know with the artists like sitting next to concept artists um kind of learning everything as I went so I know nowadays I think roles like the art assistant at ILM is kind of unique to come by I I, I mean it may be changing I'm hoping that you know that kind of starts to change and we do get more uh kind of introduction uh to roles like this but um yeah I was quite lucky in that obviously I kind of showed them that I had these like fundamental skills but they just they just needed work um I uh as you could probably tell from my Instagram I do a lot of traditional drawing um but that I only really started doing quite seriously like I say around six months before I uh before I got into the industry professionally um like growing up I obviously talked about doing art but it was like I was very sporadic like I wanted to do everything I wanted to try a bit of everything so I didn't sort of take drawing uh kind of super seriously up until that point um and one thing that you know I guess kind of set me apart is that I had those traditional skills um I you know even though it wasn't the best I you know i was drawing in sketchbooks and 
you know, I, I actually took sketchbooks to my interview um, because obviously I didn't have a huge concept art portfolio. So um, I kind of took everything that I had. I even took photography, which wasn't relevant to, to the role at all. But I was just like, this is kind of what I can do. Like, how can I, you know, transfer these skills? Um, so yeah so I, I i was an art assistant for about three three years until i was then obviously promoted into a concept art role um but you know i obviously don't want to talk about it like kind of too much but obviously the industry and the strikes and stuff like unfortunately my role was made redundant so i had to leave ilm about a year ago um but you know i've always wanted to work in video games like video games is like it has my my heart and soul you know i i just i just love it um so obviously that experience at ilm was super crucial for me just figuring out kind of what i wanted to do next um and it was a very interesting time obviously to become a freelance artist especially as i'd never done it before like basically my whole career has just been me figuring things out for the first time uh and kind of winging it like kind of working it out as I go along uh yeah that's kind of how it sort of worked out for me really um but um yeah it's it, so far that's kind of that's kind of a little bit of like the professional journey so you had a follow-up question with that I feel like I've I've waffled and you yes have... the question was like what are the most some of the most important tips Oh yes. Well, as yeah. you can tell, the juniors might, you know, also want to get into the industry. That, is, in, from your point of view, that that you learn. Yeah. So, um, so obviously, I'm going to kind of just start this by saying, like, I know everyone's journey is going to be different, and mine will, was obviously quite different uh, to maybe what it would be like now. But my biggest thing would just be like, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask whether it's just for help, for tips for uh, i don't know for someone to have a look at a piece that you're working on even if it's just early days like don't be afraid of sharing because i was very much like that i was very much like i'm going to keep my work to myself like no one should see it but it's not it you know collaboration is like you know one of the most important things of being an artist and like sharing our work um and and that's literally one of the things that i like tried to do like straight away as soon as I joined ILM I was just like okay if I need help I'm new to this I'm not going to sit in silence I'm not going to struggle and I'm just going to ask and I think that's like such an important thing to just be okay with not knowing how to do something like especially if you're new or you're junior like it's totally okay for you not to know how something works or how to do something like especially you know software nowadays is like it's not easy it's not easy to learn you know um but yeah i mean it's uh obviously it's i don't know kind of how things are going to be sort of moving forward for junior positions but i i hope it kind of levels out and that you know people can just keep making cool artwork and you know and show that and you know as long as you're determined i think that can go a really long way um but yeah don't be afraid to ask for help that's my biggest tip right those are those are some fantastic you know some advice and you mentioned like you know you just no matter what you wanted to be involved with video games but um now here's my question what are some what what are some of your favorite video games of all time like that's one question and the other question is what video games are you currently playing oh okay um so I'm kind of uh I might mention it, but I'm like kind of a new gamer. Like, you know, a lot of people grew up playing all sorts of different games. But um favorite games of all time. I mean, I'm a I'm a Wild West gal at heart. So Red Dead, of course, amazing. Um I like basically Naughty Dog is like kind of part of the reason I became a concept artist, you know, because I've obviously saw the work of people like John Sweeney and Ashley Swadowski and I was just like damn these guys are are cool um so you know The Last of Us Uncharted um I actually love Uncharted too like that 
it's an amazing game. Um, I'm like looking over at my art books. I'm like, wow. I like Dishonored too as well. Like Arcane, they make incredible games. Um, so I'd say those those ones are probably up there for me. Um, and I'm trying to think what other games. In terms of what I'm currently playing now, I've been trying to wait, make my way through Baldur's Gate. Um, I'm a huge fantasy like D and D fan. Um, so when Baldur's Gate came out, I was like, oh my gosh! But I spend like four hours in the character creator. This is like, like uh, my my work's obviously quite character heavy. So I'm like, this is an amazing game, but also terrible for someone like me because I just want to sit for like four hours and just like make characters and then i don't actually get anywhere but tell me about um, it jesus yeah, um, yeah but i am i'm literally eyeing up at the moment i want to get hades 2 because hades is 10 out of 10 amazing yeah uh so hades 2 is is on my list um but yes Can I make um, a suggestion? um this is my suggestion of course, uh, you can do whatever you want, but let Hades 2 be get to full release because it's, it's currently in early access, right? Right. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this to for people to actually buy the game right to support a company, a studio. I'm not trying to like deter people from not paying this studio the company. Actually, go buy the game, but don't play it right. Right. Just wait for the full release of the game. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Uh, the reason is because I have like around 50 hours on that game, and it's been one of the most arts like art wise beautiful games and played it's an amazing world like it has i have my own critiques of like things i'd like to change those like i think that's another topic i don't want to get into like a different subject but well, you can amazing. message me afterwards and we'll talk sure <laughs> oh definitely, definitely and um yeah but all in all amazing game and also Baldur's gate 3 oh my god like i had i don't have a problem with the character select selector selection thing but I have a problem with the build I'm going for. Because mm. I've only finished it once. Like the thing with the Alors Gate trick is if you want to fully experience it, you have to play it at least three times. Yeah. At least three times. One for Dark Earth. And and by the way, whatever I'm saying, don't worry, guys, it's a spoiler free, no worries. But basically, from going from one act of the game to the other act, there's two ways, right? And if you take one way, you can't take the other. So if you want to fully experience the game, you have to at least play it twice. And if you want to play like the darker, which is like something you're going to see in the game as well, in the character selector, you, you'll see what it is. You have to play it another time. Yeah. So technically, if you want, if it is speaking, yeah, at least twice, because you can go one one time with just a normal character and the other round with the darker, the other side of the levels. But I don't want to go darker. Like it's just uh, like even when I play Fallout when I was a kid, I couldn't bring myself to pick the evil dialogue options. Like I don't know, <laughs> even though it's a virtual. Uh, character and piece i'm talking to but like i can't i just can't i, I can't be being like see scared. i'm i'm an absolute chaos player like I, I, same you know, i've been chaos playing through um disco elysium again with, with my partner like so uh, literally the first the first ever playthrough i did i was just like at every point i can t maybe i shouldn't say this but i was like at every point i can take it's drugs fine. i was like i want to take drugs and that was basically oh, wait no like... no i thought you were gonna say wait, wait i was no, gonna, sorry. Be, gonna say like swear words in disco, like... in disco elysium in disco elysium not in real yes. life um, in game guys in game in game yeah. spotify please in don't game. nuke my podcast <laughs> oh god um All right, no worries it's fine. in disco elysium uh, uh yeah i tried to pick every chaotic like uh, option that I possibly could and it um I mean we just we just literally killed the the guy in literally the first like 10 minutes so that was also interesting Damn. so technically I'm on a third playthrough of Disco Elysium now um, oh you know what I hate about these games they're <laughs> really good but for me like you know when I because these these aren't like normal games these aren't like fast food games I think games like Valorant, League of Legends, these online games are like fast food. They're like, they're mm. like a Big Mac and a fries and a Coke, right? Yeah. But the games like Disco, Lizzie and get there, like those deluxe rare Wagyu steak with, with a side of wine. Like, you know, they're just oh, yeah. meals you need to enjoy. Mm. You can't rush through. And the thing is, uh, 
I, I usually when I play one of these games, when I want to replay them, I feel a huge sense of guilt that I'm wasting my time. And I have, I have better things to do than just replaying the game that I always play. So it's really hard for me to get myself to play for a second time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've already finished Baldur's Gate 3 once, this Coliseum once, and I've always wanted to like play them with a different set of builds. And it, it's kind of funny, like about this Coliseum actually, like um i don't know which build he was but i went for the emotional cup like the guy who's more they, they think that's more empathetic and is more emotional side like yeah. there's that person like quiet and suddenly the monologue inside me said something that really caught me off guard like it started making fun of me and insulting me for being a sorry girl because i keep saying sorry to everyone like i don't know i was drunk i but i had to, you know, like <laughs> of course i'm gonna say sorry to people like, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. to. like why roasting me mid game jeez let me enjoy this thing like no. my favorite thing is just like oh sorry i'm going really off the topic but like the point where you can like aggressively eat that guy's sandwich and there's like the two guys that are playing what yeah. do they call it and he you can like throw the ball off into the water and, and oh, you can like yeah. you can like pester him to like eat his sandwich and every time i do it because i'm like give me a bite of that sandwich so like, <laughs> it's just can you imagine i always think when i'm playing these games like can you imagine if in real life like you were just eating something and someone aggressively came up and wanted to like eat your sandwich and that that to me just yeah anyways yeah. It's kind of <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, like those games are like amazing pieces of work that I highly recommend everyone to play them. Like hey, this is an amazing game, this cool is in Ballos Gate 3. Like these are just like top of these are like gourmet games, like that's what I'm yeah. trying to say, right? And you, you, you shouldn't rush to, rush through it. Don't say this come. I, I am guilty of saves coming in both Baldur's Gate 3 and this Coliseum. I know it sucks you you might not get the result you want, so you want to reload to get the other result, but don't save scum. It, it, that's not how you should uh experience the game and yeah. the thing is actually recently in a summer sale of steam i bought witcher 3 for the first time i've, I've played the f i've never played any of the witcher games which i know sounds insane for me right and i bought it for 2.5 usd which was insane right yeah insane steam sales are, are literally the best like yeah i spent a lot of money on steam sales. <laughs> not a lot of money but <laughs> for my strategy a lot of money because i got a lot of games though um but the thing is with the Witcher 3, like there, there are like points in the game where you, you make some decisions that are irreversible, right? Mm. And this time when I played Witcher 3, I was like, when I'm playing this game, I'm not gonna save scum or do anything. Which truth be told, I only did it once. Um, but there were parts of the game where I, I was shocked. Like the game has been written so well that I was actually attached to the characters, you know. And by the end of it, when I got the my my own ending, because it has three main endings, I was actually kind of like impressed but also devastated because mm -hmm. and the game only is able to achieve that when the right piece really good, right yeah exactly and, and the thing is you don't really see that in a lot of games you know and and also there was another game i wanted to play that i haven't played, actually is red dead redemption 2 you mentioned i played it in the uh, beginning of january i played it for an hour but i was busy in a lot of other stuff in my life so i deleted it i was like all right i'm, I, I'm gonna play this because i want to enjoy it i can't rush to work and it's right and a couple of days ago i reinstalled it and i played for like a couple of hours but then truth be told because of the summer i deleted it again because my gaming laptop heats up real fast right and you know it's a laptop like it's not like case or a console or something that you know can't disperse it well and in the summers in Istanbul, believe it or not even the heat from your laptop people probably are thinking i'm crazy but even the heat from laptop it has a lot of difference on you. Like in the room you're sitting. Because oh, of how I, hot, no, I get it completely. Yeah. How hot it gets. And I wish to this to enjoy it when the when I like get to a time where the weather is nice, I have some free time and I can actually enjoy the game, right? And yeah, I'm probably going to do all the side quests as well because like I really um like to be honest, even for the, those two other games, uh, like basically in every game. I rush towards all the games. I don't know. I just rush through it, if, like like it's a chicken side. I am like a massive completionist, so like I'm that person that will go to like every corner of the map and pick up everything. It's like, it's, it's a bit of a curse 
to be honest because I feel like games take me like twice as long and like someone will be like okay have you played this bit yet and I'm like no because I've just been walking around like looking at how beautiful everything is and they're like oh my god please just like hurry up and play it but I'm like no but someone's put in like so much love and like to this part of the game like I'm that person literally um but yeah Red Dead 2 is incredible yeah amazing yeah and the thing is actually like about that I like I also always like when I play game, I I'm like a virtual tourist. I take like hundreds of screenshots whenever I'm playing any game, right? Because of different things, textures, like you know, different compositions, like anything I like about the art in the game, I always take these screenshots, obviously. Yeah. And I always appreciate when developers put in a tool in the game where you can just free roam the camera and take pictures. I always love that. I was um, like that with Spider Man. Spider Man was like my favorite photo mode. It's just yeah. like, it's no, like I don't yeah. that. oh, it's it's good. I mean, Spider Man's like my favorite like superhero. So like when there was a Spider Man game, I was like, yes. Uh, but the photo mode is pretty cool. All right, I'll check that out. And the thing is, at the same time, like the the reason I'm I'm not a completionist anymore. I used to be when I was a kid, uh, when I was younger, because I always have this constant twenty four seven non stop sense of guilt that I always have to get to the things I need to do, get, mm. do tutorials and stuff like that. Do and as someone who's like really into video games and I want to like be in the video game industry for a long time, I'm when I want to play games, I don't usually enjoy them. I try to study them. Like I'm always like, you know, playing the games as like a case study. I'm just studying this game, how everything is, the mechanics are, the story is, the graphics are. That's why I always take screenshots. So I don't really sit down to do all the side quests and everything and collect all the collectibles. I just do them to go through it so I can have a sense and the perspective of the fans who enjoy that game. Like I mm. I even played Half-Life 1 and 2 recently, like you know, a month ago, because I never played those and I know they're they were revolutionary games for the time. And I think, you know, for anyone who's in the industry, they should they're like they're I think I, I probably should make a list of games that I think everyone should play regardless of like, you know, what drawing you like. Yeah. And maybe, maybe, maybe someone has done that already. hundred percent someone. A lot of people made these lists, but I think there are like certain games that no matter what, you should play them to get a sense of like, you know, how I would games. love to see that list, honestly, because as I uh, say, like, I'm kind of a, a new, I guess, newer like, gamer in the sense that like, I play games more frequently now. Like, uh, I mean, like I mentioned, like, I grew up playing Grand Theft Auto, like way before I should have. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm very much like that now. I'm like, when I played Uncharted, um, it was actually over a, a kind of couple week break. And I was like, I have to start at the first one. Uh, like, you know, even though how old it kind of is now, I was like, I'm going to start with the first one. And like, the it was so much harder to play, like before I got to obviously like the end one. But I'm so glad that I did that just to have like the full experience. So by the time you get, you know, to like the final game, like you've, experience you know the whole story of it and um yeah i would i would love to you know i i have so many games that i just want to like make my way through um i can actually send you a list of podcasts if you want but oh my god please yeah please do will do and and the thing is you know um there are like certain like it's not about the games it's about genres as well like like for example for me recently i tried like i've never i've only played dark souls 3 for a bit but mm. really like that it and Five different people in a span of a week told me how great Elden Ring was, right? Elden Ring, Elden Ring with the new DLC. And yeah. I clicked in. I bought it for $28 because it went on sale, right? I didn't buy the DLC, of course, right? Um, not yet, because I was never into souls like games. And I know a lot of people in the comments just are going to write a skill issue for me. That's fine. Like, fair enough. But the game genre is not for me. I gave it a good shot. Like mm -hmm. I played like an hour or something. It's it's just and, 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 and let me explain to you. One. For me, like if you want to get good at Elden Ring, you can only get good. You can only get good at the game in the context of the mechanics of. That. Now, what I mean by that is, like in order to progress, you just all right. Go find an enemy, die hundred times. In each iteration, you have to learn every mechanic and movement pattern until it becomes like second nature. To you. That's mm, it. Yeah. So what it means is basically you need to put in a lot of time into it to develop the skill. I get that. I get the philosophy kind of, and I know why it's so popular and art, the lore, everything, you know, mixed in together, makes it like an amazing. And especially because Elden Ring is also open war souls like, so that adds to the charm 
and you know fun of it but for me like i like games where there are multiple aspects and ways to accomplish a task you're not limited to something yeah and i know and i and i hope i'm getting my meaning conveying my people well uh like for example let me give an example right maybe this is this might sound like a, like a bad comparison but make in as in, in a sense of mechanical uh of the game design like for example in Valorant, right it's a shoot right it's an fps it has nothing similar to uh Elden Ring, of course but look at it in the context the context of a shoot right if you even if you don't have good aim if you use timing tactic strategy your abilities even if you have really bad aim you can outsmart your opponents and yeah win. it's like those games where there's kind of there is something for everyone so i kind of i i I understand what you mean with those kinds of games. I mean, like I've I've always wanted to play Bloodborne. Like that's kind of the game that's always like appealed to me in terms of from software. Like I I love horror. Like I'm a big horror fan. So yeah, Bloodborne's like always been on my list. But I kind of know what you mean. It's like there there's a part of me that like would be totally okay with just like exploring and like occasionally fighting someone. But like the fact that obviously you have to like progress through like these people that like are just insanely hard. I'm just like, you know, I, like I, I mean, just, I'm sorry to interrupt. By the way, I just no, remember no, like no. A, another, another great example I just remember. Like for example, in the game Valheim, right? Uh, there are a lot of ways to become a strong. Right? Every enemy type has different weaknesses and strengths. But for example, for boss fights, right? Mm. Uh, like in the one of the the third boss fight is like a huge yellow thing in a swamp right and it's really hard you know for everyone who's specifically like you know trying to get to the level and getting to equipment and everything to get to kill the boss oh no worries sorry my so, alarm go uh, no worries and ho hope that the alarm is not, not for anything important no no it's it's totally fine uh, all right that. so so here's the thing like you know there's a lot of ways to kill that monster but with your creativity, you can come up with a lot of ways to defeat that enemy, right? And I'm sure you can do that in Elden Ring as well. Like there are like crazy people with you know different metas that come up, you know, with, with all this stuff. But yeah, yeah. He, but the meta, for example, in Wildheim, if you can just think it at at first, you don't need to have a lot of like game points. You can just tease the boss or just find a way, even if you're not have don't have the good game or good timing, because timing is very important in Wildheim as well. You need to dodge, parry stuff mm. like that you can kind of counter the lack of that reflex you know what i mean i like games like that yeah and and, I, and of course you know everyone has different tastes and everything but that's that's my case like for example Elden Ring, when i started the game i knew i was going to be like in far right like i i knew it wasn't going to be easy and i was like fully dedicated to go for it of course the first boss the enemy that appeared i died then it throws you in the tutorial pit you get out of it, you defeat the tutorial boss, and finally enter the open world of Elden Ring. You played Elden Ring, right? Have I played Elden Ring? Yeah. I, I tried. Same as me. <laughs> Hell yeah, I tried. I tried. So here's the thing. But the thing is, is, I love the world. Like, the world is just so beautiful. Like, they, they just Same. have, like, I love creature design, like, character design, like, and they just, they do it so, so well. But I just, I just get so angry. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, oh, I just remembered something. I'm actually wrong. In the Souls like game, you can also cheese and find a lot of ways to defeat the monsters. It's not just like being limited to a context. I just remember because in now I'm not gonna spoil this. But basically, there are ways to cheese the boss in a smart way as well. So I need to mention that as well to just so I'm not ignorant about this. But it's just not my cup of tea, guys. You know, uh, you guys are right. But the thing is, like, you know, in the beginning when I got to the world in Elden Ring. I, it opens the door and you see the the, the big tree thing and mm. the guy with the bouquet of roses in the beginning, the knight that greets you. And oh my god, that knight was being kind of a jerk and just called me maidenless. And I took that personally. So what I did was I hit him with a sword and that was my biggest mistake. Um, the guy killed me with a bouquet of roses, bashed me <laughs> in the head with it and killed me. And I knew that I need to collect the souls or whatever I had when I die and I try to do it because I died near him, mm. I respond near him, he killed me yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I lost everything. So, so for I'm not kidding. For seven, eight times, I just tried to run away from him. Mm. 
kept pacing me and killing me. Like I, like dude, I'm not the one who called the maid of this. Like, listen, it. be chill. And when I ran away, there was this guy with a huge like horse riding, and I was like, huh, how the hell am I supposed to kill this guy? So I just started to initiate the combat. And I was like, all right, here's the thing. I, I need to at least play this like 200 times to pass this. Just, just give me, give me my money back. And I did that. I refunded it. Because I knew I wasn't like going to. Uh, uh, it's just not like a pussy. I don't know. You know? Yeah. But that's I crazy. gave it a try to understand. Like, you know, because understanding the concept of the game and why it's so popular is not that bad, you know? But I there don't. Is, um, there is a game I wanted to recommend, actually. Like, I mean, People probably go, what? That's such a weird suggestion. But have you seen a game called Death's Door? No, let me check it right now. Okay, so it, it was kind of penned as like a, a small, like indie, uh, kind of souls like game. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I would recommend it. Like, if you, if you want to kind of have something kind of fun to play, oh, that's the art looks beautiful. It's gorgeous. You play as like a little crow, which is super cute um but it has like that kind of souls like boss style fights but in like these like really unusual you know kind of quirky quirky ways but um that was kind of the closest to what i played where like i actually could uh you know not die every five minutes um but uh yeah I, what game are you uh most excited for what's your most anticipated game i'm asking you a question now all right, all right. That 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 now that's an interesting question. Oh, an art one at that. Um, damn, that that's I got stung left by that question because there's so many games that I'm looking forward to. Um, I don't want to give, really give like a generic answer because of course everyone is excited about the next Elder Scrolls. Everyone excited about the next Grand Theft Auto or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I guess. I'm really excited about the next patch of this in the game called Fear and Hunger. The Fear and Hunger 2. Like there's it's a, like an amazing cult classic game. And it's like an indie horror game. I I recommend it by the way if you're into horror. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this down. No worries. I'm gonna definitely prepare a list after the episode. So I won't Yeah, literally we'll we'll talk. We'll talk yeah. games. Ooh, okay. And, okay. And I guess. I don't. I actually don't know. I'm, I'm really excited about the formalities of this. They did something really smart, right? They recorded lines just for the early access, like because there are certain events in the game where you go. Ooh, I mean, their voice actors are and and listen, ridiculous. they wrapped and they also wrapped the story into the early access as well. The concept of early access as well, like it's part of the story of it as well. That we can't get the whole content of the game, and I love that. I absolutely love and adore that. And also the voice actor of the like the Hekati, the person who's you're gonna say this is not a spoiler, right? It's one of the main like main characters, is also the same voice actor as a narrator in Ballos Gate 3. So like anytime I hear her speak or dialogue, I'm like, oh, it's a narrator from Ballos Gate 3. And yeah, so so the four is of Hades do like, I'm definitely looking forward to it because I played that game like for six hours and I'm really waiting for a four to come out. Um, the younger one. It's kind of sad that I actually don't have anything like I'm excited to look forward to. Yeah, actually, I don't know. It's weird. Like, like if you ask me, like, on like a non-recording situation, I probably had a lot of answers, but right now, nothing comes up. I've put you in the spot. It's okay. No, no, no. That's fine. But no, I should be more excited about this. That's weird. Why I don't? Oh. It's, it's a non game related, non game related, but I'm looking forward to the Deadpool 3 that's coming to the cinemas very soon. Not a sponsor. I wish I was sponsored by them. But... <laughs> um, yeah, it comes out in nine days later in Turkey. I don't know when it comes there. Some, I hope in Turkey they don't censor the film. Like they, they usually don't, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I'm like, there's a lot of really good horror movies coming out that I'm. I really need to catch up with. That's, I think, my next my next thing. Um, but mm. yeah, in, in terms of games, like there's a game called South by Midnight that's coming out, mm -hmm. um, and the trailer is just insane. Like for a kind of announcement trailer, I was like instantly on board. Um, 
yeah you should you should look it up because it's just I, I won't do it justice explaining it but it just looks amazing all right but. i'll definitely check that out uh all right so here's the thing we've talked about so, many, so much about our favorite games but i want to talk to you about something else who are some of your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most yeah so um so obviously i talked a lot about like obviously the naughty dog guys because like you know that that was kind of what um uh kind of introduced me to the to the concept art industry um i look i also i'm sorry if i butcher anyone's names um but i also really got into like the dishonored artist so like peter jablonski like his work is just insane um i um in terms of because because obviously my background is like photography so i have quite a few like photographers that i love as well um so like gregory crudson is a really cool photographer like um uh jeff jeff bridges is in like the actor takes amazing photos of like his photos are like some of my favorites as well uh but yeah in, in terms of artists gosh there's just so many um yeah like like i i think peter jablonski is like up there as like tip top um and also i love bjorn hury again if i'm completely ruining his name but his like creature designs are super super cool um god there's just like there's just so many good people <laughs> um because i'm so like i'm quite like kind of multi-disciplined i guess like i look at a lot of different stuff so um so yeah like a lot of inspiration i guess comes from like the photographers that i love and um yeah i'm trying to think like off the top of my head but yeah the like the dishonored 2 art book is like one of my favorites to just go through because i just yeah the artwork is incredible um and i've been i really wanted to get the the like dungeons and dragons like they have like a massive art book just full of like all of the different artwork kind of over the years so you know i i love that kind of style of art as well i mean there's so many people that like contribute to that kind of artwork so um yeah i would say those are kind of like the top the top ones i think um all right and here's the thing We've talked a great deal about, you know, the influences, the things we both like, like your journey, um, your process, just everything all together. But here's the, the most important question I'm going to ask you, right? Um, if you had to, as a human, tell us and uh, summarize the most important life lessons you've learned thus far, like from as long as you remember till now, the most important valuable lessons you've learned in life from your personal experience that you can share with us what those ooh, ooh, ooh. i think i'm like trying to think of this from like the perspective of like what would young emily want to hear you know what would what would like young emily be thinking like if i could give her some like wisdom now um, if, I, if you could save her a lot of like anxiety and stress and like a lot of save her a lot of time by just saying like your most valuable tips or words of wisdom. I think like I think I would just say like don't be afraid to like just do that thing, just whatever it is, whether it's you know a new hobby or you know buying that sketchbook that's maybe slightly like too expensive or like you know going and meeting that person that's invited you along to like an event or something like that i think my advice would be just like just say yes and just do it and like just remember like you know what's what's the you know what's the worst that could come of this because i feel like some of my kind of most amazing things have often come from me just going okay well, I'll, I'll do it you know and i think the things that i mean this is probably gonna sound really corny but i feel like the things that like scare us the most and probably make us the most anxious are the things that kind of have 
like the biggest rewards right so like you know uh, i feel like all of the really cool experiences i've had personally have always come from the things that i've been like oh no like i don't know if i want to do this or if i should do this um and then i've just said yes anyways and been like i'm glad i did that you know so i think yeah i think don't be afraid to just like go head first just jump straight into something like the you know the worst that can happen is you don't like it and you can step away um Pick the leap yeah exactly um yeah, maybe that would be my answer. It's just awesome. Yeah, funny that you mentioned that because there's a whole movie starring Jim Carrey about this whole subject. It's called Yes Man, I think. It was from 2010. I watched it when I was a kid. And there's also a YouTube channel dedicated to this whole concept called Yes Fear. Actually, mm. uh, I, I watched one of their episodes actually with Jim Carrey. It was a look at that interesting concept. So format of content creation. I actually liked it. They're quite popular. I didn't know that, but not to get sidetracked again we have reached the end of the podcast the end of the episode thank you so much for taking the time on the schedule and joining us where can people contact you if they had any comments or questions or just anything uh i i'm always on instagram instagram and linkedin are kind of probably the best places i i can yeah i'll, I'll can answer questions there so all right there we have it, folks. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. And just leave a comment down below if you have, if you have any suggestions or comments. Just anything. You know the whole drill, you know. Um, but just one very important thing I need to mention. I'm going to say this episode. I'm going to say the next couple of episodes again. Uh, episode 300 is the last episode I'll record in a while. Like, I'll probably be back to recording episodes maybe late summer or late October. I don't know. Because... As I mentioned, a couple of past episodes already. I think if for anyone who's, for those who have been listening, I'm relocating from Turkey to Netherlands soon. So yeah, I'm I'm going to start university, like trying to adapt to the dormitory life, get a job. So I'm going to be super busy, right? But that might be bad news. But the good news is I have like some budget set up. I'm going to spend some good money on webcam and microphones. So. Sure, there will be a delay in the episodes, but at least the quality will be much higher after episode 300, of course. But with that being said, again, thank you again for coming by. Yeah, thank you and what you did. I enjoyed Thank you for episode. having me. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. Till next episode, take care, stay safe, and we will be continuing our conversation about the games after this recording. So you guys enjoy your days, nights, or evenings, and we'll enjoy ours as well. Bye-bye.